And who is Sean Fain? Why is he so significant? How did he um, become elected and how was he able to defeat the kind of corrupt old guard? So the UAWD came through and proposed one member, one vote. We all voted on that due to the corruption that happened. Union members and presidents went to jail and they deserved it. And we got a lot of bad contracts because of that, because they were in bed with the companies. No one really talks about that. Like we got screwed for mm -hmm. 15 years because they were in bed with the companies. Um, if we would have kept Cola right now, floor level workers would be making 46 bucks an hour. So us asking for 40% isn't that much. But Sean Fain has only been the president for five months. And I personally think he's done an amazing job. Um, he's had more transparency than I've ever seen in 13 years. What was it before it was one person, one vote? What system was being used? They're, they were appointed, right? All of our the international leadership was appointed reps. Um, so this is the first time we've had elected uh, leadership, you know, on the international level. And so, yeah, as he was saying, as Chris was saying, as uh, part of one member, one vote, you know, for UAWD or Unite All Workers for Democracy. Um, I was part of that campaign in the beginning, trying to get folks, you know, organized to vote for this person they, they never heard of. You know, they're just like, oh, let's just stick with the status quo. And like, well, what has that gotten us? You know, this is my third contract I've been involved in. And like, look at the previous two contracts. You know, we're we're not getting anything more. They make it seem like we're getting a little more, but we're not. We're going you know, in a backwards direction. So it was a tight race. You know, I've got to say it was pretty close, almost parallel to, I like to compare it to the mayor of Chicago and Brandon Johnson, you know, uh, barely winning by 51, 2%, whatever. But now like just seeing the shift of, you know, people that were, you know, not supportive of Fane before, now they're, you know, getting on board, they're getting organized. Like, you know, we're all um, psyched and pumped and, and, and fired up, you know, with, with the uh, constant updates that we're seeing, you know, like uh, Max was saying, you know, he's been the most transparent and, you know, that it's great to have like all these social media avenues. But even if you're, you know, not on social media, like there's there's text, there's emails, you know, we didn't have this before. I, I don't ever remember hearing um, updates on contract negotiations. I mean, you know, I know we're not like privy to certain details, obviously, but just where we're going with this is, is in, in a good direction. And we actually have. Um a clip of Sean Fain, who I've shown on the on the show in the past because I was so excited by the type of person that he was, according to Jim Cramer, which was a kind of like the next Karl Marx, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, or Trotsky. He he seemed unclear which which uh, trope to lean into. But we have a video of him speaking on Face the Nation, and I think it's interesting what he says and also the way that Margaret um, Brennan uh, response to him. Thanks. Biden says he's the most pro-union president in American history, but you haven't endorsed him. What is it going to take for you to do that? Can I just comment, not to ad-lib too much, she looks really annoyed with him for not already endorsing him. Look at her face. Oh my God, the disdain in, in American that history, But you haven't endorsed him. What is she it going really to take for you to do that? Uh, our endorsements are going to be earned. We've been very clear about that, no matter what politician How it is. How does he earn it? Um, we expect action. We expect action, not words. And, and you know, this, this fight we're in right now, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, uh, people are talking about them trying to interject themselves into, uh, into our negotiations. You know, this, this negotiating, our negotiators are fighting hard. Our leadership's fighting hard. It's going to be one at the negotiating table with our negotiating teams, with our members manning the picket lines and our allies out there. Uh, who the president is now, yeah. who the former president was or, or the presidents before them isn't going to win this fight. This fight is all about one thing. It's about workers winning their fair share of economic justice in, okay. in, instead of being left behind as they have been in the last decades. Seems uh, unique. His, his not immediately trying to join the Joe Biden campaign. I mean, we see this happening time after time with uh, labor unions making themselves uh, pretty politically irrelevant in electoral politics by already giving an endorsement. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, I mean, like have to earn our vote. Yeah. Well, I mean, Joe Biden, he was a proponent of NAFTA and look what that's done for us. Right. Of course. Yeah. I, I was going to say, what are your guys thoughts on, on the claim that he's the most pro-union president, according to Joe Biden? 
interesting source. But well, yeah. and, and there's there's just so there's so much that's so telling about the 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 disdain in her voice, yeah. like yeah. asking that, like you ungrateful piece of shit. What are you and doing? by proxy to to all of the union members and working people that Fane represents. You ungrateful pieces of shit. What does Joe Biden have to do to earn your vote? No, yeah. no, no, not that. What does Joe Biden have to do for you idiots to get it through your thick skulls that he's good for you? That yeah. is like the un that is that is the very, very thinly hidden subtext of what she's saying. And that is also the subtext, the subtext or the overt text that is you know, uh, that we're seeing in mainstream media in the coverage of this strike right now, because that's the same tone with which I've heard, you know, incredulous pundits ask Fain and other union members and leaders, like, how could you possibly be fighting for a 32 hour work week, but expect to get paid for a 40 hour work week? Like who gets paid for work that they don't do? Like, this is just ridiculous. Well, first things uh, first, I would say the bosses uh, at these companies get paid for a lot of work that they don't do. They get paid for work that people like Chris and Marcy do. Uh, 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 Mary Barrett does not do enough to earn $29 million a year. I'm sorry. There's just no human way that that is possible. She does it by exploiting and extracting from her workforce who are breaking their backs, breaking their bodies every day. But the other thing that I want to say that I promise I will shut up is just for anyone who is getting that same sort of disdain thrown at them when they're asked, like, how could you expect to work 32 hours and get paid for 40? Well, how is that any less ridiculous than working people working 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours and getting paid for 40 hours of work? Because that is the situation that we are actually in, where this is what Bernie Sanders famously called a race to the bottom, where people can be working longer and harder and they're more productive and yet their take-home pay is going down the cost of living goes up the 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 once good career at a place like gm or ford is now a job where you can only get hired as a temp and be fired like that that is how like we that is why we need to fight not just for a shorter work week but a more solid understanding of the value of our labor and what we produce for them as brian points out by the way of course biden broke the rail worker strike i, I think it's funny though that that uh, Biden, I think I saw him earlier this week say that he was going to come down or send somebody down to negotiations. Like, wait, wait, who invited you? Like Sean Fain has said, you know, explicitly, like, uh, this is our fight. This is the workers' fight. This is the members' fight. And we don't need these, you know, ruling class elites to come and fix this problem. We're going we're gonna to have to win these fights. 